Sir? Hey, welcome to Faith and Victory Church Wednesday night Bible study. And um, we're, we're beginning a new series right now called The Authority of the Believer. And um, if you're at home and um, we, uh, we're using Brother Hagen's The Authority of the Believer Legacy Edition and the, the, the uh, Believer's Authority Study Guide. Okay, the Believer's Authority Legacy Edition, the Believer's Authority Study Guide. You can get both of these. You can get them from Amazon and or Anchor Distributors uh, or directly from Raymond.org. Hallelujah. We're also using uh, the two teaching series, uh, The Believer's Authority and Reigning in Life as a King. Praise the Lord. So, um, we are going to be studying The Believer's Authority using the study guide in Brother Hagen's book. And... Um, you know, I want to read a little bit from the, from his book, and um, maybe just, you know I'm not going to read all the pages. And um, Val, that's the uh, teaching series on there. Okay, you plug teach, you plug the the uh, thumb drive into your computer, and the, 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 all those series are out there. Okay, Hallelujah. All right. Uh, but I, I want to just go ahead and start, and I'll read a little bit out of his book, and, uh, and then we'll go forth, okay? Um, the Authority of the Believers, this is a, chapter 1, The Prayers of Paul from Brother Hagin's The Believer's Authority Legacy Edition, is unveiled more fully in the book of Ephesians than any epistle written to the churches. Because this book is based on Ephesians, that's his book here, let me encourage you to read the first three chapters of the book of Ephesians over and over again for several days. You'll notice there are spirit-anointed prayers at the end of the first and third chapter. However, Paul didn't pray these prayers for the church, only for the church at Ephesus. Um, these prayers apply to us today just as much as they did to the believers at Ephesus because they were given by the Holy Spirit. And we have these up here, Ephesians 1, 16 through 19, 20, and then Ephesians 3. I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. The God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward. Now, this is way in there. There's a bunch of stuff in the front of the book. Page one is way in there because uh, I got a bunch of extra stuff on that front end. Okay. Um, what is exceeding greatness of his power to usward, according to the working of his mighty power, uh, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead, and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. And then Ephesians 3, 14 through 19. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. The turning point in my life came when I prayed these prayers for myself more than a thousand times. I started by reading them aloud, beginning with the first chapter. I personalized the prayers by saying, me, wherever Paul said you. For example, Ephesians 3.14 I would say, for this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of my Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family is named in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant me, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened by, my, uh, by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in my heart by faith. Okay? I spent much time praying these two prayers on my knees at the altar of the last church I pastored in East Texas. I kept my Bible open for me to these prayers and prayed them for myself several times a day. Sometimes I told my wife I was going next door to pray and didn't want to be bothered except in an emergency. And sometimes I stayed in prayer for two to three days at a time. Okay? And then he goes on and says he spent about six months for the winter of 47 and 48 praying this way. And he said that um, he had been praying for the spirit of revelation and wisdom. And then the next chapter, ver uh, paragraph, he says, I advanced more in spiritual growth and knowledge in those six months than I had in 16 years as a minister. And, I mean, 14 years as a minister and 16 years as a Christian, okay? And so he, he goes on and asks God for spiritual wisdom and revelation. Then, then he goes over and starts talking about the authority of the believer, Ephesians six twelve, We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, 
against spiritual wickedness in high places. Thank God we have authority over evil, such evil spirits through Jesus Christ. We need to understand what Paul said here in the light of what he wrote in the previous chapters. We need to realize that we have authority through Christ. Our combat with the devil, I love this statement, our combat with the devil, this is on page 5 in that first full paragraph, in italics actually, our combat with the devil always should be with the consciousness that we have authority over him because he is a defeated foe. Lord Jesus Christ uh, defeated him for us. However, the authority that the believer, uh, of the believer is an aspect of the Christian walk that few believers know much about. Some think the authority of the belongs to only a few chosen to whom God has given special power. It doesn't. It belongs to all the children of God. And so we as believers, have, we possess authority. And if when you're dealing with the devil, you have to do it from the conscientious standpoint that you've got authority over the devil. You cannot do it from the position of weakness. Can't do it from the position of I'm going to fail. Can't do it from the position of I, I hope or so or maybe so or wish or so. None of those are, are, are tenable positions for the believer in exercising their authority and winning in Christ. And so we, we need to understand that we have authority. Uh, this week, I, would, I want you to, now that we have given this out to you, um, you need to read this whole chapter. And then you also need to uh, listen to the message, what is authority from the Believer's Authority audio series. That's right here on your study guide on page uh, one. That information is right there. And we'll be moving into possibly into chapter two next week. Not sure, but um, if we'll get there or not, but... Where do the gills want to sit? You want to sit there or is it here? Okay. Yeah. We're on page one of the of the study guide, the big book. They, uh, that little thumb drive is your teacher series in MP3 format. Okay. Um, and then we want to work. Through, we're going to go ahead and work through this lesson this week. But you go back and do some and, and, and uh, reaffirm for yourself, okay? Uh, let's take an overview here. Some Christians become fearful whenever the, the devil or demons are mentioned. They'll even lower their voices to a whisper when talking about them. Remember Dad Hagen telling the story? Um, you know, they, they were somewhere and everybody was sick. It was in L.A. and they were all suffering. I believe it was from the swine flu or the Hong Kong flu. Uh, one of those flus was out and... Um, I mean, they had, they had a, two, a football game, high school football game, where one entire team was out of school with the flu, and the other team, everybody but two kids were out with the flu. And it was all over the place. And um, Brother Hagin said, well, I'll just tell you one thing. I'll, I won't get it. And one of the, he was talking with a bunch of ministers. And one of them stopped. He said, he said he got real reverential and began to whisper, Brother Hagin, I wouldn't say. He said, why not? Don't you know the devil might hear you? He said, and I went, yeah, that's right. That's the very dude I want to hear me. I want him to know that I said he can't, it's never going to come on me. Hallelujah. Praise God. Um, you know, we get, we get so whatever. Oh, we can't, you know, don't want to, don't want to upset the devil. Well, uh, the devil's already been upset because Jesus whooped him. Amen? And gave us authority, glory to God, and we have that authority to exercise over him. The problem is many Christians don't recognize they have authority. Many Christians don't either recognize, understand, or believe they have authority. And because of that, uh, make sure y'all share the service there with your friends so that they know we're here. Amen? And uh, we're going to mute your phone like I just did. Okay, um, the, you know, that we don't we don't know. People don't know. And so some Christians become fearful whenever the devil or demons are mentioned. They'll even lower their voices to whisper when talking about them. Others take an opposite stance and feel that it's their responsibility to wrestle against principalities and powers. In other words, they're going to do it in their power. Okay? It's not your power. You don't have to be afraid. But, you know, the truth is neither group really understands the authority Jesus gave them. That is the church. 
over Satan and his demonic forces. They don't know. They don't have to be afraid of the devil or war against the forces of darkness. Okay? Jesus defeated Satan through his death at Calvary during his three days in hell. Jesus conquered the devil and all his demonic forces. He also took the keys of hell and death from Satan. And that's Revelation 1.18. No, I'm just, we, were, we were moving along here doing so many things. Hallelujah. Before Jesus ascended into heaven, he transferred his authority over the devil and demonic forces to every believer. Underline that or mark it. It's been transferred to every believer, not just one or two. Not to the Copelands, not to the Hagans, not to the Fred Prices or the Creflo Dollars or the, you know, Joel Osteens or, you know, the Dr. Jeremiah's or, you know, um, T.D. Jakes, whoever you see on television, and they're all big name. Uh, God didn't just transfer, Jesus didn't just transfer his authority over to certain big name preachers. It was transferred to the church, okay? And... Uh, Let's look, if we will. And, and sorry. So it's not just, it's, it's, it's to every believer, and just a few select Christians um, that are, are those that are called to the fivefold ministry. They're, they're to the entire body of Christ. Look at Matthew 28. And again, I'm not going to write this up there because you guys have this right here. These, these, these are listed right there, okay? If you're following along, you'll see it right there. So Matthew 28. Verse 18 through 20. And, they, and when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power. Now, again, we've talked before, but just for, you know, to, to remind you, the word power here is not dunamis. It is exosia. Okay? It is, it is not dunamis. It is exosia. And so in Matthew 28, power is the Greek which means authority. The other word for power is, is dunamis, but that's not the word used here. Okay? Not in this part anyway. All right? He says, all power, all excellency, all authority is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye, therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I'm with you alway, even unto the end of this world, or uh, maybe a little bit better in the Greek, uh, age. Okay. okay. And um, so it's, it's to the end of the age. All righty. And, and so Jesus said, I've, I've been given all authority. Now, um, when Dr. Kenyon, E.W. Kenyon, was teaching uh, his, on, on the, um, the name of Jesus. Now, you've seen Brother Hagin's book, got a book called The Name of Jesus, and uh, Kenyon had a book called The Wonderful Name of Jesus. Uh, Brother Hagin teaching came heavily off of Brother Kenyon's book. He acknowledges that in, in the book that they have that's called The Name of Jesus. It's in there. They, they quote Brother, Hagin, Brother Kenyon heavily, uh, give him credit for it, and even recommend you buy the book. Okay, so it, it wasn't plagiarism like one, one professor or Roberts tried to say. Hagen plagiarized Kenyon and took the pages where he had quoted Kenyon's book and stated they were doing that and then said, on page such Hagen's book, here's what he says, and this is such, such a Kenyon's book. He plagiarized. It's not plagiarizing. You're not plagiarizing when you give credit where you got it. Okay? And they asked for permission to do it from the Kenyon um, publishing to, to do what they did they, they got permission it wasn't plagiarism you can't I mean they, just some people are just so uh, dishonest you know I'm not sure if he still teaches there. anyway that was a long time ago when Kenya was teaching on the name of Jesus uh, and was reading this passage about the authority of the name 
a, a, a lawyer came up to him after the service and says, Brother Kenyon, does, uh, did, did Jesus give the church power of attorney? And Brother Kenyon says, well, you know, you're a lawyer. I'm just a preacher. Tell me, did he? He said, well, if language means anything, then he, he did give the church power of attorney to use his name. And what happened, um, Jesus said, all authority is given to me, and you go. He transferred the use of the authority to the church. And so by power of attorney, we, we, I think all of us understand the meaning of that term, power of attorney. You, um, I'm going to sign a house loan, but for some reason or another, I'm going to be out of the country the, the day we go to closing. I'm going to be on a missions trip. Okay? I'm flying out. I'm going to be in Estonia and, and Tallinn and um, Narva and uh, different areas around the country and Paida. I'm going to be out there in Estonia ministering and closings while I'm on the trip. Okay? And, uh, but we need to close while I'm gone. Well, I can go down to the bank. I can fill out a form with the bank and have a, have a notary uh, witness it called, uh, you get limited power of attorney or, or, or un, unlimited power of attorney. They have, have power of attorney. I give it to my wife that she can sign my name. That, that would be attached to the document saying it's a legal enforced document that he had, that power of attorney was granted. Okay? And it was transferred. And it, that, 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 that her signing my name is legal. I can't come back from overseas and tell everybody that you can't, you, I'm not paying for that loan. I never signed for that loan. No, because I gave power of attorney. It'll stand up in court. And it's just as if I did it. And so when Jesus gave the church power of attorney and transferred that authority over, it's just like Jesus making those statements. Jesus commanding the devil. Jesus, over, okay? So this authority that Jesus granted the church belongs to us whether we realize it or not. Now, Satan doesn't want you to learn about that authority we have over him. And we'll do everything he can to hide this truth from us. He'll fight believers more on this subject than any other truth. Why? Because once you understand this, it's a key to unlock all things. Once we get this, he's toast. And he knows it. Okay? He, his little Wizard of Oz days are over. Yep. If he's able to blind our eyes to authority, he can, he can easily defeat us in every area of our life. Once we know that we have authority over our enemy, it's up to us to exercise or enforce that authority. It doesn't work automatically. In other words, just because you have it doesn't mean it works. I've got a car, but that don't mean it automatically works. And I'm not looking forward to the day where, where, where somebody in some computer room somewhere can tell me when I can stop, go, and turn, and when I can't, and if they just don't like me or they, somebody takes out a hit, they can digitally kill me by running my car over a cliff, you know? I, I'm, not, I'm, not, you know I'm not willing to give up my freedom. That would be so cool. No. It's, it's, it's everything you ever saw about uh, uh, 1984 and more, Okay? Our not, listen, our not, if we don't use it, we allow, if we don't use it, what? Our authority. We are allowing Satan to dominate us. Only knowledge that is acted upon will bring results. Because Jesus triumphed over Satan, we don't have to war against our enemy. Our combat with the devil should be from the viewpoint that Jesus has already defeated him. Our battle, so to speak, is simply forcing what Christ has already won for us. Satan can't dominate us unless we allow him to. Satan can't what? Can't dominate. Cannot dominate us unless we allow him to. When we realize this and walk in our authority, we will enjoy the reality of what's rightfully ours and face the devil without any fear or hesitancy. Up in the left-hand corner, we've got a block there. The authority is not the property of only a few people. It is the possession of every child of God. Paul writes in Ephesians 1, 16, 17, I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in, of him. Now, fill in the blank questions. So, um, raise your hand if you want to answer. This is, this is a time for you to help us out here. Jesus transferred his what to the church? All right, Jeff. Sound like Horshack from Welcome Back Cotter. 
don't know if you ever saw that or not. Okay, the sweat hog. All right, one. Jesus transferred his what? His authority. That is correct. Jesus transferred his authority to the church. Amen? And he did that. All power is given unto me by the heaven and earth. And go you therefore and, and baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Okay? All right. What we must blank on the word for it to work for us. It doesn't work blank. Dick. All right. So number two. First one is act. You must act on the word. For it to work for us. It doesn't work automatically. That is correct. All right. So, here we go. So we must act on the word for it to work for us. It doesn't work automatically. It's not going to get up and knock you down. We are responsible to use, act on, speak, do the word. Remember, James said, be what? Be doers of the word and not hearers only. Remember? James. Nah, I don't know where it's right off. Okay, I was thinking 21, 22. Yep. Okay. Be doers of the word and not hearers only. Deceiving your own selves. We must act on the word. We must act on his word, on the word, for it to work for us. It doesn't work automatically the word does not work automatically you can lay your bible on your face and, and think you're going to get something by osmosis and i'm going to tell you what nothing doesn't work that way okay number three do i have a volunteer the devil blank dominate us unless we blank to him too what he can't, okay. He can't dominate us unless we allow him to. Y'all feel it? Now, everybody's getting a participation grade at the end of the class. Okay. Oh, copy that from... Um, Ellie gets a zero because she cheated to copy Dick. Right here in class. I bet you were a Boy Scout, weren't you? <laughs> I'm, she ain't going to cheat off my paper. Number four. It's knowing the blank that sets us free. Who's going to answer that one? Chrissy. <laughs> Chrissy Capel. I'm just being silly now. It's knowing the truth that sets us free. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set or make you free, depending on what translation you're reading, okay? All right. And so, number five. Number five. Many Christians have tried to do through blank what only the, or, or, or only blank blank will do. I'm sure this probably comes from us uh, listening to the tape series and stuff. Anybody know what that is? Many Christians have tried to do through blank what only blank blank will do. No. How about Christians if I tried to do through praying or fasting? What only blank blank will do? The. Huh? Word. Okay? What only the word will do. You got Christians who try through prayer fasting to do something that requires acting in, on the word, using your authority in the word of God to get done. Okay? Now, I'm, I'm going to raise this part. We, we got this. You know, ecstasy means authority. Okay? All right, I'm running out of room. I gotta have room. Okay, so number six. All right, number six is according to Ephesians six ten, we're to be strong in the blank and not in what. 
Ephesians 6.10. Be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. So we'll be strong in what? In the, the Lord. Okay. And not in what? If we're to be strong in the Lord and the power of His might, what are we not to be strong in? Ourselves, our strength. Okay. Okay, so, Christianity is the only religion in the world in which the God we worship lives blank us. All right, is that, was that a consensus answer? All right, next time, we're going to we're gonna have to give Val an opportunity here in a minute. Yeah, all right, she's just sitting back there. Lives in us, okay? Christianity is the only religion in the world in which the God we worship lives in us. Okay? Number eight. The blank we have as believers belongs to us whether we know it or not. Vow. Authority. That is right. The authority we have as believers belongs to us whether we know it or not. Okay. If Christians have problems in their lives, it's because they have not blank their authority and have blank problems to exist. Exercise. Okay, I heard exercise a couple places from Jeff and somebody in the back back there. I didn't get <laughs> from Chrissy. And what was that other Jeff? All right. And authority, who wants to answer the last one? He's going to raise your hand. Did Penny, you have, have you answered one yet, Penny? Sort of. Authority is delegated what? Penny knew that one. She's, she's been listening in church, hadn't you? Yeah. Authority is delegated power. All righty. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen? And so authority is delegated power. Glory to God. Amen. Um, our side scriptures over here are Ephesians 3, 14, 17. For this call, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. And then here the little, uh, little bubble block, whatever we call those. If somebody comes up and tells us what they are, I'll, I'll use that term. Knowledge acted upon brings results. Okay? All righty. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how we're, I don't have room to put all these up there. Like, so here's what we're going to do. We're just going to call them out. All right? Multiple choice questions. Okay? Never, never leave one blank. I always feel that one. You might get it right. If Christians don't know they have authority over the devil... A, Jesus will use his authority on their behalf. B, it doesn't matter. Satan does not bother people who are born again. C, the devil will take advantage of the ignorance and dominate their lives. D, it will still automatically manifest in their lives. Felony. C, ding, 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 ding. The answer is C, the devil will take advantage of their ignorance and dominate their lives lies oh that's right what is I'm sorry you didn't phrase it as a question that's 3,000 points what sets people free a prayer B asking please wait to be called upon in my class C the truth word D both A and B Melanie, since you were so excited, which one? The answer is, what is C? Okay, the truth of the word. What sets people free is the truth of the word. All right, Miss Capel, the value of authority depends on what? 
A, the power behind it. Are you telling her the answer? Okay. The power behind it, whether we have sin in our lives, B. C, how many Bible verses we have memorized. Or D, how big our offerings are. A, that's right, the power behind it. The value of authority depends on the power behind it. And we know that God stands behind the authority that's been delegated to us. Ah! <laughs> Melanie Trebek! All right. Um, number four. When we are in a crisis, where should we look for help? A, we should call the prayer line of every major ministry. B, we should call our pastor no matter what time it is. C, we should contact the most spiritual person in our church. Or D, we should look to the greater one who dwells in our hearts. D, what is D? Sister Trebek over here ain't going to let it go now. What is B? Call our pastor no matter what time it is. Yeah. Be like Brother Hagin that time that uh, he, was, he, was in, he was sleeping, got a phone call, and went and got up, bumped his, bumped his toe, getting to, trying to answer the phone, and picked it up, and there was an operator and said there was an emergency call for Kenneth Hagin. Would he take it? And he said, yeah. And the person got on and said, oh, Brother Hagin. said, uh, it's really not an emergency. We were just having an all-night prayer meeting and called, got the operator and told him that so we could get through to you. We just want to know what the word is. And he said, I thought, I, I thought about it, but I didn't say it. I wanted to say, yeah, drop dead. <laughs> <coughs> Brother Hagen yeah. woke me up from a good sleep. Lied to get me on the phone. Hallelujah. No, we, we look to the great one. Now, listen, there's, no wrong, there's, no, there's nothing wrong with prayer lines. But when, that's, that's what we do when we're more immature. As we grow in the things of God, and we get more mature, and we understand how to use our faith, size our authority, we should be able to take our stands ourselves. Now, don't not get help while you're getting there. But we should mature to the point that we're able to stand in our own faith and get it. That, that's our goal to get there. Amen. And, and the pastor is available. If you've got an emergency, I'm available. All right? But at 3 o'clock in the morning, you're calling me saying, Pastor, my stomach hurts. With what I've taught you, you better be using your own faith on your stomach. Now, if you're on the way, if you're on the way to the emergency room or, you know, something seriously going on, you know, we're trying to, you know, tell you not to not, I don't know how to say it. We're, we're not trying to tell you don't call. On the other side, we're trying to have you realize you have authority which you need to exercise and use it. Okay? Pastors are there for you. I mean, the, the ministries are there for you. It's, but when we, st we depend on that, that's what we, we're trying to do and never trying to exercise our faith and use our authority because we don't really understand we have authority. That's the problem. Okay? All right. Number five. Don't shout this one out loud. I want to ask on somebody individual and get some answers. Can we exercise authority over another person's will? A, yes. We can exercise authority over any person's will, whether we know the individual or not. B, no. We are only able to exercise authority over spirits, not people. C, yes. We can exercise authority over the wills of our family members. D, yes. We can dominate people who have weak, meek temperaments. Brother Bill. Okay. But let, let me uh um Right. Yeah. Right. The key is a, uh, over another person's will. In other words, if, they're, if you're overriding their will, then they're not... And that, that's where, you know, I understood. I, I saw that and I thought about it too. I went, eh, but, but the question says, can we exercise authority over another person's will, which means they're resistant to what you're doing? The answer is no. 
Okay. If there is, can you come into agreement and pray for somebody and pray for them if they're not resisting it? Yes. Then you're not overriding their will. So, no, you have authority over spirits, but not people. You just can't go around and demand that they, you know, whatever. Take, you, know, you can take authority over the spirit operating in them. Amen. But their will has to be uh, sub subjected to it. Okay? All righty. Now, the next th five things we're not going to do tonight, you're going to do that at home this week. Okay? These next, uh, t actually, ten things. Questions for personal reflection. I want you to... Um, Take out a separate piece of paper, college rule preferred. If you want to, turn, if you want to type these, we want to, in time Roman 12, right justified, double spaced. It's, it's, complace, it's, it's on completion and accuracy. There's a 20-point deduction for asking too many questions before you ever start on it. It's a 40-point 40 40 deduction. It's half your semester grade. Yeah. So, like, number 10 is... What, what, what is one truth you've learned from this lesson that you can apply to your life and how will it enhance your life? The, is, this is really, we're not turning this in. This is for you. I want you to, you know, write, you know. Now, if you come in here next week and you haven't done any of them, I'm kicking you out of my class. No? I'm going to send you to the principal's office. Uh, Jeff will be the principal. No, that's right, Miss Janie. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's move on down to the, the bottom half of page six. Knowing what's ours. Now, again, please do, do this work because it's for you. It's not for me. It's for you to think about. It's for you to contemplate. Uh, listen to the, the first uh, audio tape series on the authority of believer from the All the Authorities of Believer uh, teaching series. Read chapter one. And then and do these reflective questions, okay? They're, they're to help you. They're, they're not. We're, we're, we're just messing around being kind of schoolish, you know, but it's really to help you get some insight, okay? And, and then, of course, go ahead after that and work on what it tells you to do in the book for next, chapter 2 for next week. Knowing what's ours. Many Christians don't know what belongs to them in Christ. As a result, keep trying to get what God has already provided for them. When they keep asking God for something that he's already given them, they are stepping out of faith. They're not stepping out in faith. They're stepping out of faith. And when they're not in faith, they're not pleasing God because the Bible says in Hebrews eleven six, without faith it's impossible to please him. Our wonderful Heavenly Father has given us everything we need to be rich and strong. God's great redemptive work, Jesus didn't do anything for himself. He did it all for us. Colossians 1, 13 says that God hath delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Our spirits were translated into God's kingdom the moment we were born again. Christians often ask fellow believers, pray that I'll be delivered from. You know, blank, blank, blank. But Colossians 1.13 tells us that we've already been delivered from the power of darkness and have been translated into the kingdom of God's dear son. And the word translate means, not to translate, but the, the word here, how it's used is translate, translate into the kingdom of God's dear son, is to remove from one place, and put into another. Born again Christians have been removed from the power and authority of darkness and put into God's kingdom. The word in Colossians 1.13, darkness, refers to Satan and everything that is in his kingdom. In Ephesians 4.27, we are told, neither give place to the devil. You is the understood subject of this verse. It doesn't say you give, never give, but it's understood. We understand it from our English, don't we? Growing up, you know, some, there's times that you... The, the noun or the pronoun are uh, understood, although they're not there. Okay. Um, it's up to you not to give place to uh, the devil, the, give the devil any place. This, mean the devil can't, this means the devil can't take any place in our lives unless we allow him to. But that also means he can if we let him. 
So, so many Christians don't know they have authority over the devil and unknowingly yield to him. Anytime they don't stand in their authority, the devil takes advantage of the situation, situation and steps in to detour, or to devour, I'm sorry, and detour, but to devour. God's love for us is too great for him to save us, make us new creatures in Christ, bring the church of Christ into existence, and then leave us to contend with the devil in our own strength. <coughs> I started reading that verse. I went, God's love is too great for him to save us. You've got to read the whole thing. It's too great for him to save us, make us new creatures in Christ, bring the church into existence, and then leave us to contend with the devil in our own strength. After Jesus defeated Satan and his demonic forces, he transferred his authority to the church before he ascended into heaven. Ephesians 1.3 tells us we've been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. And though Christ, or through Christ, we are fully equipped to be victorious over the devil. Christians should not be ruled by demons and evil spirits. Knowing who we are in Christ and using the authority we have been given enables us to overcome any attack of the devil. Hallelujah. Satan no longer has authority over us. And he cannot dominate us when we stand our ground and operate in our authority. So let us rise up, use what is ours through the blood of Christ, the name of Jesus, and the word of God. We have everything we need to be victorious whenever our, whenever our adversary tries to lift his ugly head. Amen. Lives will be revolutionized when we realize the authority that belongs to Christ belongs to each member of the body of Christ. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. And I'm going to have to get a book back from somebody. Jesse, I'll take y'all's, okay? Uh, the, the study guide. Because uh, I don't have the other ones in yet, and I've got to have one to make copies from for next week until we can get these other in. Uh, so I'll give you a copy, okay? Y'all will give that back to me. And you'll get it back, okay? You'll get it back, all right? So next week we'll, we'll pick up in chapter 2. Y'all enjoy that? I know this is a little bit different format. Um, you know, and um, um, we want to see how many people make 100 in this course. Amen. And, um, and how many have to go see the principal? All right. Praise the Lord. All right. So next week we'll, do, we'll get into chapter 2. And, um, but you do this now. You do your study at home now. You've got, you've got all the materials you need. <clears throat> you've got the, <coughs> you have the, um, the audio, the teaching series, you have the, the, the book, you have the study guide. All these are the things we need to be able to do this, do this work, okay? And uh, it means doing some stuff at home. But that's good. This, this puts you doing some stuff at home, all right? Um, who came in late and didn't get a copy of, of this? We were handed out at the beginning. Val didn't get one? Okay. All right. Um, Val and, of course, Jeff and Melanie. Um, part of this you already know about, obviously. And then the other part you probably don't know about. Um, she said Jeff's mom passed away last Thursday, and then Julie's dad passed away yesterday. Yes, yeah, uh huh. And um, it was actually had gone to the hospital. Had been doing good. He went to the hospital, and um, all of a sudden took a turn in one day, and she had left to go to the hospital to go do something. If she couldn't even get back. He passed away that quick. Um, it was just like you know he was talking about how he was going to get better and he was doing well, and you know uh, just a few days before, and then suddenly. Um, we don't know exactly what all happened, but he, he made a turn and, and passed away yesterday. So um, we have um, both funerals are pretty close to the same time. So um, we're not sure how anybody can make both or whatever. Or, you know, we just don't know. But we'll let you know we're, we're, that we, uh, we know Jess Mama's funeral is here in High Point area. Um, and then the, Julie's dad is down in Franklinville. Now, somewhere down in Randolph County. I don't know exactly where that is. <clears throat> so, and, um, and then Jonathan Woods getting married Saturday afternoon. So, I'm going to be a busy camper on Saturday. Okay? We're going to try to, we're going to, try to make everything we can make and, and uh, as much as we can. All in one, uh, one, one day. I can do it. Hallelujah. So, now... Um, that's right. We, um, if 
you came in late, we're trying to coordinate um, at least like for Friday and Saturday for the Gills and then maybe Sunday and Monday for the Tuckers. You know, getting them food is going to be hard to coordinate since they're so far out of town and everything's taking place so far out of town. Um, so we would like to be able to maybe take, not maybe, we won't be able to take care of the Gills for Friday and Saturday. And so if you're willing to help, let us know. See contact or Ellie, you know, let her know that you're willing to help. Um, we're going to make it happen. Um, so that they don't have to deal with stuff on Friday and Saturday with all you know they're going on, um, and you know, and uh, then we'll we'll just kind of take care of Julie and Larry afterwards, um, so that uh, they can kind of rest after all that stuff, all the events on Saturday. Um, I, we just don't know another way to coordinate with them being so far out of town, okay, and um, but I think that'll help you guys on Friday and Saturday, and um, so. Melanie, can you get Jeff's number from Jeff? Phone number? So you can, whenever, whoever you coordinate with, you can help get you get in contact and so on and so forth? Okay. Okay. All right. And we have prayer clause. All right. Dear Father, we pray over these clause in the name of Jesus. We thank you the anointing of God will go into them. We thank you that the evil spirits will go out of the people. They'll be made every bit whole in their bodies, at the top of their heads, of the soles of their feet. We speak it by faith in Jesus' name. We take authority over the works of darkness and let the anointing of God destroy the yoke and remove the burden in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.